This is a demonstration of doing multicast firmware updates over normal LoRaWAN devices. It's a demo that's been created by ARM and the Things Network for the LoRa Alliance All Hands in Philadelphia. Um, the setup that we have right here is a typical setup of a device in the field. Um, it has a target MCU, in this case an NXP K6RF with a LED attached, which runs the actual software, and then there's an external radio made by Multitech, which is the actual communication with the LoRa network. So normally this device is connected over LoRaWAN class A to a multi-connect conduit, a LoRa gateway, and the gateway is then connected to the public network of the Things network. And as we are in Europe, that means that we have to adhere to the 1% duty cycle limitations that we have. So normally, if people if people ask you about firmware updates, they say, well, basically, it's impossible because of the cycle limitations. So to facilitate this, uh, we've been working together with the LoRa Alliance on two specifications. And one is a support for multicast on top of LoRaWAN 1.1. And the second thing is that we've uh, been working on a proposal to do fragmentation of binary packets, including a way to fix errors or fix missing packets as part of the part of the LoRa WAN specification. So we're gonna show you right now. Right now this device is connected over LoRaWAN class A and it's sending every 10 seconds. As you can see there's a joint succeeded here. And it's sending data to the public the things network here in Amsterdam. Now when we want to start a firmware update, we first want to bring the device into a multicast state. So for this we have multicast groups. So when we start the process of a firmware update, the first thing that we're going to do is set up a multicast group. This tells the device that it needs to wake up in class C after a while with a certain set of keys. And all devices that are going to be part of the multicast group are going to share these keys. This is delivered over lower rank class A, so it's still protected by the same session keys that you normally have. Um, then the second thing we're doing is a fragmentation setup. So that we're going to tell the device how many fragments are there going to be and how big those fragments are going to be. In this case, there are 204 frag size and there's 32 fragments. Right thereafter, we tell the device to switch to class C mode. Uh, in this case, in 52 seconds. And after those 52 seconds, the device will wake up with the same keys that we provisioned earlier, and all the devices will be part of the same multicast group. Thus, if we send something from the gateway, and we can do it in burst mode, because we have m many gateways around us, so it's okay if we send this in about a minute, and after that we're quiet for 30 minutes, just to save on battery life on the device. The device right now switches to class C. At that moment, it sends a notification over class A uh, the, device, the, the network knows over class A that device is going to switch because there's a time sync as part of the multicast protocol. And when all the devices are in class C, uh, we can then start queuing the firmware. And at that moment, we'll just start plummeting the network with these firmware packets. And that goes in the highest spread factor that we can achieve based on the devices that are connected. So in this case, we can basically send about 200 bytes a second because we're on spread factor seven. Right now, the radio gets that data, the target MCU then processes it. And in the, spec in the specification, we basically only say, like this is how you do fragmentation, this is how we multicast support. So in this case, we're running additional software on top of it to make sure that the cryptographic integrity of the firmware is also up. So when this firmware is completely is completed, um, we're actually going to replace the LED that we have here with an LED that blinks blue and green. So right now you see that we have um, gotten 28 packets, we lost one payload. That is fine because the fragmentation algorithm helps us with that problem of sending extra packets that can be XORed over that it was already received. So. Right now we have the fully constructed fragment, and we're going to run the actual update process. The bootloader is done, and now the thing is blinking. So we've done a full firmware update of this target MCU in under a minute. That's really cool. To prove that it's actually running this new firmware, it's not like a little trick. We can disconnect the data, completely depower the device, and whenever you put the device back on, it runs the same firmware. 
It's completely fully firmware updated in under a minute on an actual LoRaWAN network that is completely compliant with LoRaWAN one-to-one -one standard.